Hello. How's it going? Um, can I get a mic check, maybe, in the chat? Just, I'm very nervous, very new to this. I'm watching the chat for you guys. Hello. Thanks, Lamau. All right, let's go. Hello, I'm Lyndon Wells, a general UQCS committee member. Um, I'm a final semester CS with no major student uh, because I've been very disorganized with picking subjects. Um, and I've taken just one semester more than, than the allotted three years. I'm also a developer at DES, the Department of Environment and Science. All right, let's jump in. So the purpose of this talk, this talk has been done at least twice before, twice on the YouTube channel. Um, How She Tan did um, level up your terminal game, and earlier still, Neil Ashford did Vim and Tmux. Um, so the purpose of this talk is similar to what a lecturer does. They give kind of the same lecture every year, but it's to engage students and um, yeah, hopefully, yeah, make this worth it by asking questions and um, yeah, just try and get something out of this. So I do want to wow you a little bit, but it's sort of, sort of basic. Um, so I just want to teach you how to get started and um, yeah, you're not going to be an expert by the end of this, but hopefully I'll present to you like a pathway to get started. Um, I'll show you some workflows, um, just something I would use for 2310 um, and something I might use for a quick Python script um, and just get you to consider command line interface stuff. Um, we're currently like VS Code is super popular, um, JetBrains stuff um, and command line interface is not the best thing. I don't want to tell you it's the best thing, but it's useful sometimes. Um, so, yeah. Um, I said this kind of before, you won't know Vim by the end of this. Neil said the same thing in his talk. Like, yeah, this is just going to teach you how to get started. And um, when I spend hours configuring stuff, I feel like I'm wasting my life. Um, I don't want you to spend have to spend hours to get something that's usable. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's where we're at. Um, so secure shell SSH, it's a protocol for remotely accessing a computer. Um, it's also the name of the program you use to invoke it. So yeah, that's, that's overloading. That happens kind of a lot, um, term overloading. So if you want to learn a little bit about how it works, computer file has a good video. Um, the most common things to SSH into um, at least for a student, is probably MOS. So MOS is a computer um, that's managed by UQ, um, and you're eligible for MOS if you're enrolled in an EAIT subject in the current semester. Um, other things are, like if you have a Raspberry Pi and you don't have a display connected to it, you would probably SSH into that. Um, and if you're hiring, say you hire from like DigitalOcean or AWS or Azure, or GCP, you hire a VPS, a virtual private server, you would probably SSH into that as well. Um, this link, I will visit it in a sec. Um, that's going to be useful later. Uh, I found that the, it was not that easy to find this website. Um, so I'm just putting it there because I think it ought to be sort of known. Okay, um, installing SSH. Uh, if you're on Windows, which I imagine is probably most people, um, Windows Terminal is very good. Um, it's first party, like it's developed by Microsoft. You download it off the Microsoft Store, um, and it's yeah, it's pretty lightweight, and it just I think it's good. Um, so I don't really like being told to install software, but I do recommend you install Windows Terminal if you're on Windows and you don't already have it. Um, you just need to think about how you're going to do things if you've got. MOS access and reliable internet, um, and you want to use it for a subject like 2310, I'd probably just recommend SSHing into MOS for everything. Um, but you can also, you can always switch, like go from SSHing into MOS to start doing it on your local machine. If you don't have uh, one of those things 
and you're on Windows, I recommend using WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Um, it used to be quite difficult to install relatively, but now with the latest Windows update, it's like a single command. Um, and it's pretty good. It's, it's getting better. Um, so it's quite heartening to see that the support for that is there from Microsoft. Um, Putty. What is Putty? Um, in this case, it is a, it's a client. It's kind of old. It's on pretty much all lab computers. Um, it's good for, I would say, like connecting to you, like using it in CSSE 2010 for connecting to your little microcontroller or something like that. But in my opinion, um, Windows Terminal and just SSH, the, the program um, supersedes it for Windows. Um, whatever, you do you. Um, if you are using macOS or Unix, you should have it installed already. Um, any troubles installing, just message, like put it in somewhere on the Discord and someone will help you. Okay, um, so I'm going to do a demo where we just connect to MOS um, using a password to begin with. And then I'm just going to set up an SSH key. Um, we can um, look at setting up a config and looking at changing the shell to ZSH. So let's go. Okay. So um, you might you might see I've already removed. Um, one sec, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. For those of you all on 240p. Um, so SSHing into MOS goes something like this. Now you're going to find out my student number at mos.labs.eaitukedu. Okay. Um, because I've removed my SSH keys, it's asking me for my password, and that's the same password you would use for the student network. Um, okay. Um, so that's one way to log in to MOS, is just using the password. That's what I would have done like probably 500 times during the time that I did um, 2310. Um, so that's fine. Um, but what I would like to do is show you how to set up an SSH key. Um, so I'm going to press Control D to disconnect from MOS. Um, and now we're going to go SSH key gen to generate a, a private and public key pair. Um, once again, this is something that is covered in um, computer file in the SSH video plus in their um, private public key cryptography video. So I do that. It asks me where I want to save it. I want to give it a slightly different name. I want to make it, just call it UQ. Um, already exists. Okay. Um, passphrase. This is something you have to think about. If it's for work stuff or anything, anything sort of confidential, you almost certainly should have a passphrase. Without a passphrase, it means that anyone who has access to my computer, um, like the one that I'm sitting at right now streaming from, can also get access to um, my student account. So do you want that? Um, I'm okay with having no passphrase because I always make sure to lock my computer when I leave. Um, but that's just something you should think about. Um, it's something you would have to always enter um, when you're using the SSH key. Um, so I'm going to leave that empty. It'll ask me for it again. No. Okay. Um, so now I've, if I CD to SSH, I've got, um, I've got ID RSA UQ, and that's my private key. If I show you that, I'm kind of screwed. Um, and I've got my public key. So now I'm going to cat my public key. And then I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to go into my Firefox. Um, and I'm at this page. This is linked in, in the GitHub repository for this talk and maybe on the slides, I'm not sure. Add a new key, paste it in, OK, and save changes. Um, it's going to take a minute. So this, I'm not sure how exactly this works because it doesn't add it to the usual place, but uh, yeah, 
it it seems to work. So um, now what I want to do is I want to try SSHing, but if I go if I do it the same as I did before, I won't be able to. It, I don't think it will get me in there. Okay, it did. That was cool. Um, and so that's one thing. Um, so now we've got an SSH key set up, and now I can do that um, pretty quickly. Like, I don't have to type in my password anymore. So that's kind of cool. Um, another thing is SSH config file. So um, I've got my config file. I'm going to use nano because I haven't talked about Vim yet. And nano is just nice and simple for simple things. Um, so this is my config file. I've commented out stuff. Um, but I'm going to uncomment it. So what I'm saying is I want to type SSH MOS, um, and it will. When I do that, it will assume that the the host name is MOS.labs, etc. My username is that, and you can find the identity file. That's my that's my private key um, at this path. So uncomment all these lines. Um, save yes, and now SSH MOS gets me in without having to type my student number or the host name or my password. So pretty damn handy in my opinion. Um, all right, let's jump to back to the slides. Okay, so that's done. Now we're talking about Vim. Um, what's Vim? If you have started 2310, you probably know. Um, so the etymology to just to begin with is it's stands for Vi Improved. Um, I'm not going to read out that quote from Wikipedia, but I was just curious because Neil, Neil in his talk didn't know where Vi came from. He just knew that Vi, Vim was Vi Improved. So I just thought I would sort of add on to that. Um, super low resource usage if you're into that, especially if you're like me and you have like old, terrible computers from like 2014. Um, Vim is, uh, is your friend there compared to, say, a... Um, JetBrains IDE or VS Code. Um, so Vim is kind of your only choice at some points. It's like, why should you like this? Well, you don't have much of a choice. Um, so if you're interacting with a file on a computer, say MOS, um, unless you are remote desktoping in um, or you're physically sitting at the lab, you can't edit a file on... Um, your home drive, your UQ home drive, unless you're using like a command line editor. So, um, uh, my bad. There is SSHFS, which apparently is, has like a high load on the file system. Um, not sure. Anyway, maybe the sysadmins will like me for mentioning Vim. Um, okay. So, um, I'm going to use tmux, but don't worry, I haven't explained it yet, but, um, so I want to tmux attach to my talk. Um, I actually want to, actually, I probably want to make a fresh one. Um, cd, cli talk. Um, so I realize I have not actually copied files over um, and I'm minorly freaking out right now. Um, I was going to show, okay, I'm just going to make a fresh one. Um, so, um, some source code, um, another line, very original, Linden, nice one. Um, something that's useful, um, in Vim is a block select mode. Um, so say, um, say these first few lines had like stuff that I wanted to chop out. Um, I'm using visual block mode to, um, to chop out this block of text. Um, this happened to me once when I was given a, a bit of code with line numbers in it and I just wanted to chop out the line numbers, but I wanted to keep the rest of the code. Um, 
So yeah, delete that. So that's that's kind of cool. Um, and another thing that Vim has just some weird things. It's like an extremely unassuming user interface. It's got l nearly nothing, but sort of behind the scenes, there's so much going on. Um, so for example, pressing this tilde key um, capitalizes um, or toggles the capitalization of the letter that your cursor is on. Um, so that can be pretty handy. Like if you wanted to, um, if you want, if you had a list of names, um, and then you want to, so say I want to, yeah, just capitalize, um, the, each of them, I would, yeah, just do that. So I realize I'm not selling Vim to you super well right now, but, um, it's, it's sort of worth learning in my opinion, and it's just got a bunch of features. Um, the way that you that you learn um, Vim Tutor, uh, the, the way that you learn is through something called Vim Tutor. Um, it's I doubt you've done a tutorial like this before. It's just a temporary text file, as you can see from the bottom here. Um, it creates a temporary text file with this content, and you just you just follow the lessons. You're moving the cursor around. It's got Vim has got weird arrow keys, um, so you can. Right now, I'm using my arrow keys to navigate through the text as you normally would, um, but Vim has this idea of, um, you know, micro, micro like efficiency, where um, the effort it takes to move your fingers off the home row. Um, to your arrow keys, which are somewhere to your right, probably, um, is is something that they want to get rid of. So, um, like it's saying here, I'm using H to go left, L to go right, K to go up, and J to go down. Like that's kind of weird, um, and it's so frustrating at the start. It's like learning to touch type again. Um, but yeah, it's it's sort of cool. Um, yeah, so. This is the Vim Tutor. This is how you, this is how you learn. As far as I know, like I haven't learned everything on here, but I've learned most of it. Um, and it will take you, I don't know, maybe one, one to two hours for a first pass. Um, and yeah, it will be frustrating. I, I'm not gonna butter it up. Um, so yeah. Um, so that's pretty much all I want to say about Vim for now. Um, Tmux is um, a terminal multiplexer. If you've done CSSE 2010, you'll understand that that's kind of some, a way of switching inputs between common output, like have one common output and switch between inputs. Um, and just, I think it's helpful to mention that, to think of the data structure of Tmux, sort of it has sessions and sessions have windows and windows have panes and you can always count on that on those like, relationships between objects um this is a bunch of commands i don't expect you to just remember these um i'm going to demonstrate them all in a sec um so yeah the the first few are um ones that you would say that you would use from the terminal um so new session, attach session, um, ls, I, th I think you saw me use that before, ls just to, to list the current sessions. Um, and then it's got key bindings within Tmux. Um, and these key bindings are, as far as I know, just keyboard shortcuts for the shell commands. Um, okay, let's do Tmux stuff. So, um, Okay, how about a wow you to begin with? So, Tmux, I've got a session called Nyan. Nyan? Nyan. Um, what's that all about? I'm going to use the attach session command and then um, uh, dash T to mean like the target and then attach to it. Um, okay. So, there's. Um, yeah, this is a Nyan cat program that's installed on MOS. That's kind of cool. And I've been, I have Nyan'd for over 105,000 seconds. So 
there's one thing about Tmux is the sessions extend beyond your like you can attach and detach from a session um, and it won't like so to speak die when you disconnect um, I started this like a day or two ago this session um, so there's one thing um, and then I've got a talk session um, I should probably I'm gonna demonstrate just um, so I used a shorthand Tmux A, so that's shorthand for attached session. Um, the flag was still the same. Tmux LS, as I said before. Um, and um, so I'm going to attach to my talk and just um, show some some like commands within Tmux. So Tmux has a prefix key as well. Uh, this is something I forgot to mention. Um, the MOS, like sysadmins, um, I think how she talks about it better in his talk. So if you want something more authoritative, go to that talk. But um, the MOS sysadmins, they um, change the configuration of Tmux um, to be like um, to be like an older, grumpier cousin uh, screen. Um, so their configuration lives in etc which is a um like a typical directory where you where you find system wide configuration files um so they've set the prefix to be control a that's c a means control a hold them at the same time um and then they've just done various things to like restore um restore normality because they've changed the prefix key um, as far as I understand, and they've done this thing called set status off. So that's the status bar at the bottom um, that you will see. That's this green status bar at the bottom that they've disabled, and I find that uh, confusing, to say the least. Um, so Tmux, you can go crazy with um, like splitting sessions. Like what I'm doing is going Control B and then a double quote to, to split uh, vertically, and then the percent sign to split horizontally. Um, and yeah, it, you can just go bananas. Like, it, I would never do this, but just as a demonstration, it's it works like a tree. It just splits what the current thing you're looking at into two, and the direction of which is determined by if you press percent or double quote. Um, so I'm gonna remove some of these because it's kind of silly. Um, you can change so right now I've got I've got two windows open um, and I'm switching between them by pressing control B and then arrow keys um, and where was I going with this um, so that's how you switch between them and one thing with Tmux is like if the one command that you remember for Tmux um, you can be like me it's control B or at least your prefix and then question mark and that shows you all the commands um, and you can as is typical for like reading man pages you can press the forward slash key to open up a search and say I wanted to find the command for renaming a session um, type in rename um, there we go so I would do that by um, saying prefix and then dollar sign. So I'm going to press Q as is also typical for like reading things like this, like man pages. Um, and then control B dollar sign. Um, so yeah, talk, what else would I call it? Jeez. Um, so yeah, that's, that's renaming stuff. And yeah, honestly, that's all I want you to remember is just um, question mark that will tell you everything and the, the naming conventions is like like very logical um, like things are called like kill if you want to remove something it's kill um, and then there's keys and then there's session window pane um, oh, and how to remove a, a pane is like so I'm going to create one and then control B and X 
and it's asking me, it's giving me confirmation. I'm like, yeah, kill it. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's, that's TMUX stuff. Um, I mentioned earlier that there's a GitHub repo for this talk and I've put my personal TMUX configuration file, um, in that repo. Um, it pretty much just undoes, um, what the, what's in the, um, been done by the sysadmins, um, and adds some extra things. Um, one thing you might run into, this is, this is kind of weird, is, um, if I go talk, uh, hello, oh, that's right, I called it cheese, didn't I? Um, there was something else, Tmux ls. So I'm looking for the funny colors one. So this is a configuration thing that I ran into and I'm just mentioning it because it was kind of uh, pretty annoying for me. Um, I just pressed tab there, by the way, to auto complete, um, the name funny colors. Um, and it, it knew what to auto complete because it knows that there's four sessions. Um, so yeah, that's that. So this is, this is what Vim, I know I haven't showed you normal Vim, like I uh, sort of have. Um, but this is what Vim can look like if you don't set this special environment variable default terminal. Um, yeah, so something that I found myself or, or something like that was, yeah, to, if we just cat um, this file, what I've done is gone, it's probably going to look awful for you, but set dash G default terminal X term 256 color. Um, so yeah, that seemed to fix it. And then that makes my, um, Vim look more normal. Like it has, has colors now. Um, yeah, I'm not going to spend ages talking about this, about like my, my bindings. There's really not much. I did change the shell. Um, that's something I want to make you aware of too, is, um, this page exists. Um, change shell. Um, so ZSH is a, it's still like a POSIX compliant shell or something like that, but it's sort of generally agreed that it's a bit nicer. Um, I actually still use bash on my computer just hasn't been bothered to change it. But yeah, I just want to make you aware that you can change your shell, um, on MOS, but you can't do it via the, the change shell command. Um, so yeah, um, there's that like change, change shell, um, just tells you permission denied, but you can change it to the website. Okay. Um, let's go. Um, so gotchas, um, one thing that I haven't showed you is, um, copy mode. Um, if I exit out of that and then if I, if I want to scroll up in the terminal, um, say I just like cat my, if I go to my home directory and then I cat my, um, whoops, not CD. I cat my configuration file. Um, and I want to, so I actually want to scroll up and I want to see the top of my configuration file. Well, um, Tmux appears to not allow that. Um, but there's something called, and I'm going to look this up in the manual, um, control B question mark to pull that up. Um, copy, copy mode. Um, where would it be? There's a lot of commands with copy mode. Um, I'm pretty sure it is page down. Maybe not. Um, this is kind of a fail on stream, but just be aware that copy mode exists and it will allow you to scroll up, um, when you need to do that. Um, so yeah. And oh, another thing is, um, this is the point of my, um, this is what I was trying to show with, um, talking about copying between files. This is something that I ran into as a 2310 student. Um, and you start to write assignments that have multiple files in them. Um, so I have something called, so I've got utils.c down below. 
And I've also got something called Alice.c. So Alice is like the a generic name for a client or it's used in cryptography a lot. Um, so what I'm trying to say is like Alice.c is a, a specific client and utils.c is some general functions that I might want to use. Um, I just realized something that I forgot to mention um, is the pizza roulette. Um, just leak my email. <laughs> um, uh, hopefully someone has got it in chat already. Yes, the mouse got it in chat. Okay. Um, uh, mini crisis averted. Okay. Um, thank you, the mouse. Um, so I want to I want to copy this. I want to just copy this this line, this first line of text, in from Alice to Utils. Um, and it's not so hard, is it? You just select it, and then, and then I go. Uh, like in my in this terminal, I'm using it's Control Shift, Shift C to copy, okay, and then um, activate that lower one, and then Control Shift V, and that's my public key. Like that didn't work. It didn't it didn't copy to my clipboard. Um, so the way that I have overcome this, and there's probably multiple ways, um, but the way that I've overcome this is to go to use Vim's inbuilt um, like split window thing. Um, so the way that I would do that is um, split utils that see. Um, and now it looks slightly different. Um, and the stuff I had was at the bottom. The stuff, stuff that was at the top is now at the bottom. But now when I copy stuff in the, the sort of Vim way, um, which you will learn in, in the Vim Tutor, so I'm not even going to touch too much on that, but I press YY um, and then Control W to initiate like that I want to move Windows somewhere. This is the, the Vim way of changing Windows. And then I press J because that's the Vim way of saying up. There's a lot of translation here. And then P because that's to put. Look at that. Wow, I've copied text from one thing to another. Um, I remember feeling just so infuriated that copying text was a mission um and yeah it's so that's just something i wanted to mention um so now i'm going to talk about um a workflow this is an example one for 2310 um so once again with the tmux commands just tmux a for attach session um dash t for meaning target session and then i have a session called 2310 um, okay, a lot going on here. Um, I've got tabs up the top. So those, these are, this is another Vim feature is tabs and I can move between them using GT and G capital T. Um, so this was a 2310 assignment. Maybe I think it would have been semester two, 2020. Um, and also down the bottom. I've got in brackets my session name, but it's also zero vim and one RPS server. So the assignment at the time was a rock, paper, scissors um, assignment where you write a, a server, some kind of like um, adjudicator, I guess, that handles the players. And um, players that are RPS client. Um, so what's useful about this is I've got what we've got going on here is a session called 2310 and then two windows. One of them's called Vim and one of them's called RPS server. That just happens to be the net, the names of some processes that are running in it. Um, so I think this is a pretty cool workflow because I'm pressing control B P to go to the previous, um, to the previous window. And now I'm like editing these files, making changes, and then control B N to go to the next window within the session. And then I'm um then I'm like testing my client and server and seeing if they can interact. And you can absolutely like if you've got say two clients, because you need two clients to make a game, um, as you saw before, you can split it. Um and now you've got this going on. And there's some hectic wrapping going on because I'm so zoomed in. Um so yeah, that's that's 
most of what I wanted to say about um, Tmux. Um, that's the gotchas. Um, and I think we're pretty much done. Um, others, I'm pretty nervous and there's probably things that I've forgotten to mention that were that I intended to say. Um, so if you feel there's been gaps, um, yeah, chuck something in the Discord. Just, um, yeah, I can help you or other people. Um, these are just, these are things that everyone deals with when they need to connect to stuff. So, um, yeah, anyone can help you, I reckon. Um, Pizza, Lamau threw the link in the chat earlier, but, um, yeah, we're going to draw the, draw the pizza soon. And, um, I don't know if you heard Minecraft server, UQCS Minecraft server. Um, so yeah, minecraft.uqcs.org. Um, get on it. Um, I'm going to jump on afterwards. I just downloaded it for the first time in years today. And um, yeah, it should be pretty fun. Um, so now I'm going to jump in a um, in a Zoom call with Lamau. And Lamau is going to announce the winners for um, the pizza roulette. I think there's, there's 10 up for grabs. Um, and I don't have a special scene for it. So I'm just going to go... Um, I'm, actually, I'm just going to... Yeah, I'm going to go post-show while I'm setting up the Zoom. And then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll hear from him. Okay. Thank you, everyone.